Thanks a lot for joining me for another sleepless night here in Waisai Laos. The locals have mostly gone to bed, so you should just hear the occasional sound of a motorcycle, maybe a few insects, and of course the Tokay geckos. Hopefully other than that, it's just you and me. Now, I'm painting a, a watercolor painting of a burning heart on cotton paper. Now, I've painted hearts quite a few times, so I didn't bother doing any sketches for this one, and I just kind of winged it. Now, the imagery of a burning heart can conjure up a lot of different feelings for people. Here in Asia, everyone has looked at this finished painting, told me it, it looks scary and painful, whereas some of my Western friends said it was kind of interesting. And my artistic intents, I guess, are largely irrelevant when people look at my art. Um, but this painting was created to be paired with a poem I wrote on happiness and compassion. But I am open to all interpretations from those who view my art, so feel free to tell me in the comments what you feel, feel when you saw it being painted and how you felt when it was completed. I'd love to hear your thoughts. A couple years ago, I had prepared to go on a pilgrimage in Japan. It was called the Shikaku Hachiju Hachi. However, a few days before I was, I was planning to set out, a tsunami decided to like bear down on Japan and open up rainy season with this whole lot of fanfare. So I had the idea, you know, like, do I really want to be rained on for the next three months as I complete this pilgrimage or should I wait? And, you know, I don't really have any connection with that pilgrimage other than I thought it would be really nice to walk through the Japanese countryside, take in all the beautiful mountains and visit the historical temples. And, and so I decided, I think I'm going to wait, and I'll just have to put that beautiful experience on, on hold because it's like a 40,000 kilometer walk, and I, I just didn't like the idea of doing that and being rained on the whole time. Well, time went on, time went by as it does, and I found myself having this really strange experience. I was staying at my sister's house. I was on some medication at the time for my nerve pain. What I didn't know is that that magic medication can actually cause what's called closed eye hallucinations. And I had been using that medicine for about a year and I had no ill effects, so it kind of took me by surprise. But I sat one day meditating after my physical therapy and yoga session and I had this strange vision. It felt clear as day, like I was like watching a movie. I stood there in a kind of rapture, just watching it unfold. Now, my mental state that day was one of kind of self-hate, regret, guilt, failure, you name it. It was I was just beating myself up that day, it, and it was the reason I chose to meditate, to try just to calm down, chill out, find my center, if you will. So as I closed my eyes about 20 seconds in, and my eyes started flickering, flickering kind of rapidly, like I could actually feel it. And there before me, in like perfect clarity, was a cement-like slab. Uh, a pedestal, if you will, and what was sitting on top of it was a metallic s statue made of copper, bronze, or, or maybe even tarnished gold. It was beautiful and towered above me, and and I was sitting below it in, in this lotus position. Um, now, the statue had like a conical, almost spiraling set of like a uh, crown of sorts on top of its head, and um, it was in a very relaxed position. It had one leg, its right leg up, and its left leg folded and tucked down. Now, the eyes were empty, but they looked at me intensely, but it also felt almost passive. And it seemed to, as it looked at me, to perceive every molecule, every atom, every particle of my being, and my brain was telling me it was seeing all of my thoughts and my past actions. It perceived everything about me. And I felt extremely naked and a nerd before this statue, but I felt zero judgment. I didn't feel like it wanted to give me a hug or anything, just that it saw everything and made absolutely no judgment that I was accepted and it was okay to be me. And at that moment, I felt like the sense of tranquility, a peace of almost, I don't want to say belonging, but like a serenity kind of set in and wash over me. Behind the creature was, uh, the statue was like a watercolor-like effect in earth tones. Um, I say earth tones, but I am colorblind, so it could have been greens, I don't, I don't know. Um, it had like this lighter border, and then a darker square, and then an even lighter inner square. But the edges were very poorly defined, and they kind of blurred, and, and kind of like a watercolor motion. It wasn't static, but that was like the backdrop behind it. Um, but I... I kept focusing on that face. Now, as I continued to stare out of curiosity, just watching it, as I did, its face split into three, three faces, still connected, and one looking at me and the two others looked at an angle to the right and to the left. 
Now, in this strange vision, I understood it was looking at others also, not just myself. And then a multitude of arms unfurled behind it like a peacock, just thousands of arms reaching in all directions, but not at me, just resting behind the statue itself. Then the statue's face, arms, they all began to like replicate to the right and to the left and upwards as well. And now, as it did this, it, was, it felt kind of amazing. It felt like it was trying to help everyone. That was the impression I got. Like it was looking at everyone. They wanted them to feel this same sense of peace and serenity that I was feeling. And as quickly as this experience came, it was gone. And it literally lasted less than eight minutes. And I know that because I had a timer going at the time. I, I like to time my, my meditation sessions when I do do them. So I don't have to think about the time. And um, so, yeah, after that happened, you know, I, I, I just felt kind of amazed and curious. It was very an awe-inspiring moment. And I kept asking myself, what was this strange experience? And why had my brain conjured up this strange vision? So I began scouring the internet like any modern scholar trying to find any reference to multi-armed statues. Unsurprisingly, it pulled up a lot of like Hindu deities, but none of them looked anything like what I saw. Uh, besides having multiple arms, of course. So it was just like, nope, nope, nope. I, I, I was not really discouraged yet. I just kept looking because, you know, I had hopes that maybe in a different culture or maybe something else, I might pull up some kind of statue that looks similar. I found one, finally, that looked a little similar. And so I pulled it up. And it went by the name of Avalokite Savada. That's the Sanskrit name. And upon further reading, I realized that this was the male version of, of Ganon, who is represented as a female in Japan. Now the name um, Avalokite Savada, it translates to the Lord who gazes down at the world, which really fits my experience. You know, I really felt like it was really staring at me. Now, I have lived in Buddhist countries for like the last six years of my life. And upon greater research, I realized I was exposed to, exposed to variations of this imagery in Japan, Myanmar, Nepal, and so forth. And it made sense uh, for my brain to like conjure it up. Oh, even Vietnam, I saw a large statue of this in Vietnam. And I went inside a large statue of this in Japan. I just had, I didn't realize that Alvalo, Kite, Savada, and Kanan at the time were the same. Um, so um, Alvalo, Kite, Savada, or Kanan, role is that of a bodhisattva. So bodhisattvas are not gods. They are beings who seek to help others reach enlightenment. And this particular one is supposed to be to represent the compassion of all Buddhas and is said to appear in to people in various forms as needed male or female. And there's recorded in Buddhist literature at least three, 33 different forms. And some countries it's you know female like Kanan, some it's male like Avalokitesavada. And what what's so interesting about that to me is is just that you 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 would think that it was such a different um, image that people would be like, no, no, that's not the same thing. But to them, it's just the, absolutely this is the same person just representing itself in many ways. Uh, it, it kind of intrigued me a little bit. So, you know, my response to this event was uh, not the, the typical, yep, I just hallucinated. That would have been too easy. <laughs> I did what any sensible traveler would do when approached by a strange vision. I got on a plane and just flew to Japan, where I learned there was a pilgrimage called Saigaku Sanju Sansho. Now, this, uh, this circuit is in is the 33 temples in the Kansai region. I also learned that there was like a similar um, pilgrimage to this one, and that one takes place in Kyoto. And again, 33 temples. Now, the 33, as I said, is significant because it's believed that's the number of forms Kanan has taken when visiting people in Buddhist literature. So I decided to go to the Kyoto pilgrimage because um, I figured, you know, with my back injuries and nerve damage, it's, you know, doing the larger one would be quite difficult and time consuming. So I, I decided I would, I would start in Kyoto, see what I can finish. And I was told by people that you don't have to finish them all at one time. You can start it and come back at a later date. Um, and I, that's, that's what I had planned to do because I, I, I didn't have enough time to go to all 33 of them. But I did go to quite a few of them, and so while I was not able to complete it, it was a very beautiful experience. It even motivated me, you know, to, you know, to you know, write some poetry and, and work on some paintings about it. And I would say that if you decide to go to Kyoto and kind of check out any of these temples, um, 
Ren Geoen Sanju Sangendo is a very beautiful temple. It has a large, um, it's called the Sanju San, um, or Sanju Kanan. It's a type of botatsu that has many arms behind it. It's supposed to represent the thousand arms of Kanan. And the other one is uh, Kyo Mizadera. Yeah, so both of those temples, um, they have that 1,000 armed Kanan. And I just find that particular image of Kanan very beautiful. And you may like the other ones more. There's, there's the male ones, there's uh, different positions and poses. There's, there's a lot, and they all have their own symbolic meaning and about different teachings of Kanan. But they're all the same person, which is quite unique. Now, the reason for the Nurma's arms and faces is because he is said to be trying to reach out to help all those in need. To he so the many faces is so that he can hear all the suffering and he can see what's going on with all his many eyes. And then the hands are to help reach out and try to uplift those people out of their suffering so they can achieve enlightenment. And I thought that symbolism is quite beautiful. Um, now, you may be wondering why I say it's a hallucination and not some religious experience. Well, for me, most religious experiences are hallucinations or altered states of consciousness imposed on, on us by chemicals. But as the days and weeks went on, um, the closed eyes hallucinations became more prolific to the point I re reached out to like a medical professional and I was like, hey guys, what's going on, you know? And they told me that the gabapentin I was taking may be the cause of, of this or may be a factor in why I was having these strange hallucinations. So I stopped taking that medicine and sure enough, it takes about two months for that medicine to get out of your system completely. But as soon as I stopped, the, the strange vision stopped too. Um, it was about two weeks later. They just done. And now I'm still left though with a sense of peace and appreciation for the beauty of that symbolism that I was able to experience. It felt very real. When I closed my eyes, it was literally like I was sitting in a movie theater watching it unfold. And there's, it, it was just, I, I have no other word for it. It just felt completely real. It didn't feel like I, I was dreaming, you know? And I, I, I understand, you know, the appeal that some people have when they, they, when they take psychedelics because of this experience. I've never actually taken a illicit substance and always these have been prescribed or recommended by doctors. So, um, but I, I get where people are coming from when they say it's, it's such a powerful experience because, you know, it led me to go on a pilgrimage. Um, not, not the, um, that's unhealthy. It, it, it actually was quite healthy for me. The, the pilgrimage is basically all I did is I, I went to each of these temples and just said, thanks for visiting me. Um, I said, basically, if you're real, thanks for visiting me. And, you know, cause I don't, I didn't at that time, even, even then believe it was real. I'm, I'm very much an agnostic slash atheist, um, depending on my mood. And, but I felt that, you know, physical manifestations of our beliefs have very powerful healing properties. And since I was able to feel this serenity, this peace, you know, that I hadn't felt in a while because I had been beating myself up so hard, I felt a, you know, a physical manifestation of my gratitude was uh, appropriate. And even now, you know, reflecting back on that experience, you know, the smell of incense in the temples, the, the sound of the, the Buddhist drums beating, the, the beautiful different types of chanting, they're all very peaceful to me. And while I was walking between temples, I would often listen to a, a famous chant for Avalokite Savada. Um, you've probably heard it. It's called Omani Padme Hom. This 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 particular chant is for Kanan. It's it's uh, it's very popular in in the West when it comes to Buddhist chants, but it's extremely popular in the East because it's believed to be the um, to provide the most merit, if you will, to help people reach enlightenment. Now, I grew up culturally Christian. But, you know, I've lived over here for some time, so Buddhist culture is also part of me now. And so I'm kind of mixed in that regard when it comes to that, that backdrop of a cultural backdrop, backdrop of my personality. And when I, when I think about this character, you know, there, there are some modern Gnostics who have espoused or um, said that they believe that Ganon and Jesus are the same individual. And for me, I, I get where they're coming from because I feel they are both cut from the same archetype of compassion. You know, this, this same idea, the need for a human to have an ex external force that says, I forgive you even if you can't or you're okay as you are. You know, now let's move past this. Because we all make these mistakes and sometimes we get hung up on them. 
forgiving ourselves is a lot harder than forgiving other people. And sometimes it takes that archetype of compassion, this idea that you're still a good person or you're still okay. You know, not necessarily good or bad, just you're there. It's it's okay to be you, you know, like that giving you permission. And so if any of you sincerely believe in like Jesus or Kanan, I mean no disrespect. So pay no mind to this wandering agnostic slash atheist over here. Um, but I do believe in their teachings on being kind and compassionate to everyone. And how we convey the idea to me is not as important as the result of being kind and compassionate. So I just wanted to share this kind of, I guess that you could say a religious experience um, or spiritual experience, um, all brought on by modern pharmaceuticals. Um, but it is still what it is. It still was a, a nice transformative experience for me to to remind myself to to relax and and feel that peace again and be compassionate to myself not just other people and i just wanted to share that with you so i hope you enjoyed this story i hope you've enjoyed this speed painting i just want to say thank you for joining me and i hope that uh, if you do like this kind of content you will please uh, don't forget to share it subscribe to it and, and give it a little like and please visit my facebook page it's it's uh you can find me on facebook if you just type in at colorblind creation that should pull it up it's called adam's colorblind creation now if you're interested in any of my prints or commissions reaching me there is the best your best bet to get a hold of me and i just want to say thanks again guys so take care this, this is colorblind creation